come down, but I'm good. <laughs> Everyone. Yeah, you're enough cornered by recording devices. It would seem so. Not for the first time. Thank you. <laughs> Can you talk to, like, start off, like, how did you get involved with this show? With this show? Yeah. Uh, I was working on a video game called Diablo 3, and um, uh, it's usually directed by Andrea Toyas, who does a lot of Blizzard stuff, World of Warcraft, I've worked with her a lot. I turned up at the studio one day and they said, oh, you were in that room with Andrea. And I walk in there as a woman who I didn't recognize, and she said, hi, I'm Andrea Romano. And I went, what? <laughs> I said, I've been trying to meet you for years. She went, that's nice, get in the booth. And I went, oh, great. I just messed up my first meeting with Andrea Romano. I'll never see her again. And I tried to put that aside of me, and I did the session. And a couple of days later, I got a call saying, well, you know, would you like you to come and read for Alfred? So uh, it, it sort of, I didn't have any time to think about it. It had to be back within the hour. Uh, I think it was late in the casting process, and so I, I just sort of instinctively did my read. I had a little bit to go on in terms of an image, not the final image that we ended up with, but something that was a guide. And um, I just flew on my instincts, seat of the pants stuff. And um, then I, they put me together with, with Anthony, and we got on like a house on fire, you know. Um, he's a very easy guy to get along with. And we seemed to gel well as the characters. Uh, and that was it. Were you given this sort of new back, well not new, a different backstory? Alfred that we've seen, we're used to seeing. It was clear when I saw the image that there was something different going on. You know, I knew that something, and so that definitely influenced the voice. Um, I think the image is a, it is the sort of strongest indicator you get as to where you're going to go with the voice. Uh, and it wasn't a million miles away from my own voice. It felt comfortable, and I felt like I could tell the story within that. Um, so I didn't have a lot of background, but I knew that there's something very different going on. And as soon as I started getting, you know, scripts on the day of recording, then I started quickly piecing it together, and that's how it started to develop. Can you give us a little Alfred? Can I give you some Alfred? Oh, sorry, didn't I tell you? I'm the butler. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good line. Yeah. That, was, that was my favorite line of the whole show. Actually. Can you t like, how would you describe this Alfred? I mean, now you know more about him. So a lot of people that don't. Yeah. People are skeptical, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, I think people are worried. I think people are worried that uh, it's a departure from from Alfred. But I mean, if you're taking Batman younger, it makes sense to take Alfred younger too. Um, so they've done that. Uh, I think they've given him a bit more of a, you know, a harder background, a tougher military background, the MI6 thing. Um, but what is still true and what has remained true is the fundamental relationship between Alfred and Bruce is the same. It is the same. He's there to support, he's there to nurture, he's there to honour the promise he made to Bruce's parents. Um, and I think we've really stayed very true to that. So all the compassion, all the wit, I hope, is still there. Um, I think people are sort of missing the sort of cocky one-liners that... that uh, but, I mean, it's there. It's going to be there more. Uh, a good example is Alfred is forget, forever trying to get Bruce to eat a, a decent meal and all Bruce wants to have is a protein shake. Or a green tea. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and I think there's still that sort of slight vying for control between the two of them, of, of who dictates whose life. And I think that's a wonderful, it's a very rich vein to tap, you know, for these two characters. So, whilst we've gone in a new direction, that's for sure. And I don't think we're ashamed of that. I think it's, you know, I think we're proud of it. Um, but I think the fundamental truth of the relationship is still there and still on it. Uh, and that's what I love about the whole show, you know, it's it's still very much Batman. Did they ever try to make you give him a bit of a more aristocratic thing? Never, not once, no. We That was my instinct initially, uh, to go with the voice that we ended up with, that, it, that's how it stays. It was a great fit, it was just one of those serendipitous things. Yeah, it was just fortune. Mitch mentioned to us that one of his inspirations for Alfred on the show was uh, Get Carter or Michael Caine. Right. Uh, did you have any particular influences when you went in that you, you had in your head about how you wanted to play the character? No, because, uh, you know... Initially, you just go with your instincts on what, on what you, the brief sort of outline that you've been given, and your job is always just to tell the truth of the character, to serve the story as best as possible. So really, all you've got to go on, and I like this, is the writing. Now, I would get the script maybe a day before recording, uh, and I'd have a quick look through, not really trying to make too many choices, because I kind of like working off the seat of my pants a little bit, by the skin of my teeth. It's, it's more exciting, you tend to be more instantaneous like that. 
So I really wanted to develop him through the process of finding him in the scripts, which is dangerous. It's a more dangerous way of doing it. Um, but I've been, I, hopefully, I've been doing this a long time now, with, you know, across a lot of different avenues, and, and so I've, I've, I've learned over the years to trust my instincts a bit more. And I think that's part of the discovery, was really saying, okay, well, what are you going to throw at the character, and how am I going to respond to the material that you throw? So it was very much dependent on the material that was given to me. And I tried not to have too many preconceptions, because it would then be too easy to, you know, I might start suddenly talking about Michael Caine, or, you know, um, I got it very, very, very emotional. And I didn't want to do that. <laughs> No, was, that, was that Michael Caine or was that, uh, that Steve Coogan's Michael Caine? It might have been Steve Coogan's Michael Caine. Alright, you busted me. <laughs> I liked it. I got it. Yeah, he's supposed to blow the bloody doors up. <laughs> Do you guys do the voices together, or are you are you in, are you separate? We record together, okay. and that's you know in so much voiceover work you don't ever get to do that. You're 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 locked in a box with the headphones, and you don't get to relate to anyone else. So this is really a fantastic experience. Also, because I think if you you know me and uh, Anthony and Sumali and I uh, have become really strong friends. Uh, I know other people are strong. I know a lot of other people who have been involved. Um, so we've managed to really build up those relationships, and that can only serve the characters better because it just you know, it just means that you, you're in a comfort zone with those people who, you know, it, as the characters spend a lot of time together and therefore it makes sense that you then gel as a company. Um, the other great thing is that, you know, Andrea Romano has such an incredible source of fantastic people to come in and, and do these other characters. So you're sitting there and, you know, these extraordinary people, some of whom I don't think I could mention yet, uh, walk, you know, some, some major TV guy <laughs> walks in off the off the street to, into the studio and you're like, really? You're the, you've got him? This is amazing. This is going to be fantastic. Um, and, and again, you know, every piece of work that you do is a learning experience. So when those people walk in, you, you, you're always, you know, building your own capabilities by learning. So it's, it's a really fun way to work. And it, it tells the story better that way. You know, it's clearer. What you think. So, uh, you know, obviously you, you said you looked at the picture of Alfred and knew that there was something different going on. Yeah. So how uh, big of a Bat fan are you? You know, I've, uh, I, used to, I used to get the comics when I was a kid. I, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a, 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 an aficionado by any stretch of the imagination, but I like, you know, I do a bit of research. Um, I, you know, I, I like the fact that it gets changed up a little bit. I think it's risky, of course, and I think, you know, sometimes fans feel insulted by that. Uh, I don't as a fan. I, you know, I think a new look on things is, is, is you know, it's refreshing and enlightening and it, it takes things in a new direction. What I do want is I want the, the traditional relationships to be sort of honoured. If, if he suddenly became Batman's sidekick, well, that wouldn't wash for, for Alfred. And I think there's concern that that's what's happening. It's not at all what's happening. That is not Alfred's role in this. Um, He's just a younger, he's a, it's a younger reimagining of him, and therefore he's just beginning to realize that he's slowing up and he's not, he's not the guy he once was, and so he wants to provide that extra support. Um, and I think that's an interesting part of the, the story to delve into. You know? So, uh, yeah. There you go. It's a pretty iconic role. How does it feel to sort of step into those shoes? It feels like a tremendous honour. You know, it's it's flattering to be involved. Uh, this franchise, I think, is the franchise of franchises. Uh, it's it's hallowed ground, um, and therefore risky to do something different. Uh, but I, I love the challenge of that. Uh, I, you know, whenever you enter into a, a, any kind of genre, you you have a, a duty to honour that genre, and I, and I take that very very seriously. So while you're doing something new and interesting, hopefully, you also you know. You also want to maintain the, the, the traditional, you know, character elements that have always been there. And I think that we've worked really hard to do that. We've kept the compassion. We've kept the fatherly relationship. We've kept the humor. We've kept the acerbic wit. Um, but, you know, that's why there's a, a British character in this thing. Uh, it's, to, it's to set that up. And, and I think we've honored all of that. Um, so... It's, you know, it's a huge privilege, it's a huge privilege. And I was like a giddy schoolgirl when I found out. I mean, it's, you know, in the callback, 
yeah. Antony and I remember we looked at each other and the noises they were making behind the glass we were like this might actually <laughs> this might actually happen and we were both very very excited and we've been excited ever since you know anytime we've been allowed, been allowed to go up into the hallowed offices and have a quick look at a clip or something or see any of it we've just it's just stupendous when it starts all coming together and coming alive it's it's so exciting yeah. and I love what they've done with it I really do Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you.